good afternoon. I'm talking to Dr. Richard Schaffer, radiation oncologist who treats patients with Dupritin and Lederose. Richard, good afternoon. Can you tell me which doctors are involved and what other healthcare professionals are involved in the radiotherapy treatments for Dupritin or Lederose? Thanks, Anna. Um, so the main doctors involved um, have to be doctors who are able to deliver radiotherapy, so radiation treatments, and they're called different things in different countries. So um, in a lot of places in the world, they're called radiation oncologists. So radiation, obviously, that makes sense. Oncologist means a doctor who deals with cancer. So why is that the case? And that's because most radiotherapy is given in high doses to treat people with cancer. So therefore, radiation oncologists tends to be the term used for a doctor who can administer radiation, for instance, in the US, um, in, in Australia, and, and in various other countries. In the UK, for instance, we're called clinical oncologists. And the reason is because as well as being used, as well as being able to deliver radiation, we're also able to deliver chemotherapy for, for cancer. And so we have that sort of dual role, but we're still the ones who deliver all the radiotherapy um, in the UK. Um, people who don't deliver this are medical oncologists who deliver chemotherapy, but also hand surgeons, rheumatologists, none of those people are able to deliver radiotherapy. So for people with early Dupuytren's disease, it's really a radiation specialist you need to see, whether it's a radiation oncologist or a clinical oncologist. If you see a hand surgeon, they might perhaps say, watch and wait, in other words, do nothing. They might say, you know, we could give you a steroid injection, which, you know, arguably isn't terribly effective in a lot of people. Um, but really, if you have early stage disease, they're unlikely to want to intervene surgically. So you really would be seeing a surgeon for treatment when you have a contracture, in other words, a bending of 20 to 30 degrees, you know, or more um, of your finger. Um, so really, you need to see a radiation specialist who will know about uh, how radiation works, um, how to do it, uh, the evidence involved, which you know the other doctors would be less likely, should we say, to, to know about all of that. Once you've chosen your radiation specialist, I would suggest that you ask them um, what sort of experience they have in dealing uh, with radiation for Dupuytren's or lead host disease. So are you their first patient? Um, if you are their first patient, do they have a good link with another radiation oncologist who has a, a wider experience? Because there's nothing wrong with a radiation oncologist starting off, but you know, if they've only treated one, five, ten patients, then it will be likely they probably want to be guided by someone else who's more experienced. Um, so that would be um, what I would say for someone who's not experienced. Obviously, if someone's done a lot of it, that would be um, you know, much more straightforward. When you've chosen your radiation oncologist and you go ahead with treatments, there'll be various other staff members involved. Um, you might have a CT scan um, in order to plan your treatment. So you would get some radiographers involved in that scan who will position you and do the scan. And then you'll have treatment radiographers, or they're sometimes called radiation therapists, who will position you and then administer the radiotherapy. Um, of course, the radiotherapy can deliver, be delivered in various ways by different machines. We should, don't need to go into too much detail, but there'll definitely be a radiation therapist involved with your treatment as well. Thank you.